<laughs> well, I don't know where to start on this thing today, but I thought that maybe that uh, we could put a overdrive transmission in place of a regular three-speed transmission. And uh, well, they gave me the script to read. I'm I'm not much of script, so let's start back at the beginning. Back in the day, which was in the early 60s, when I was out hot rodding around, I remember pulling in and buying Sunoco 260 gas for 55 cents a gallon. So it took 20 gallons to fill the tank up. Big deal, 10 bucks. They never told me that gas was going to be $4 a gallon. They never told me that I might not have gas someday. So you take, take a look at that, you know, back then we were burning up maybe two tanks of gas on the weekend, cruising and doing the illegal stuff we shouldn't have been doing. But today we got these hot rods that we want to drive. And they tell me that by summertime it's going to be $4 a gallon. Oh, by the way, this is 2012. So if someone sees this 50 years from now, they're going to think $4 a gallon is a bargain. So, 30 years from now, maybe gas will be $20 a gallon? Who knows? Maybe we'll be running around in electric hot rods. I don't know. But anyways, today is today. So, if you want to drive your hot rod, let's take the three-speed out. Let's put a four-speed transmission in with lockup. You're going to be able to cruise down the highway at lower RPM. It's going to be quieter for you. Of course, your gas mileage is going to improve, and you're not going to uh, have to watch that little old lady pass you because you can only run 55 miles an hour. So some of the things that we need to look at when we're thinking about doing that is even the old flathead Fords or the nailhead Buicks or the old Cadillacs, if you get on the internet, somebody out there makes an adapter to adapt anything to any transmission that you want to adapt it to. Because what we're going to talk about here to start with is some of the things that we need to be aware of when we're doing this. Number one, when you get your adapter, it's going to come with several different pieces. One will be an adapter plate that will go between the transmission and the motor. You're going to probably get a, a pilot that goes in the back of the crankshaft to line up your torque converter and more than likely you're going to get some kind of spacer to go between the torque converter and the flywheel. Now when you get these parts some of the things you're going to want to look at is your dowel pins. You're going to want to make sure that your dowel pins fit in the dowel pin hole nice and tight. This is not scientific. It just needs to fit in there nice and tight. You're also going to want to make sure that that dowel pin fits in your adapter properly. That's probably one of the first two things you're going to want to do is make sure that you got good dowel pins. One of the things you're going to want to make sure is that your pilot that goes in the back of your crankshaft, your adapter, fits on the end of your torque converter nice and tight fits all the way on and has no movement. The other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that this fits in the back of the crankshaft tight. You don't want any movement here because this is what's going to center your torque converter and keep your pump aligned. When you go to put this in, you're going to want to check for any leftover alignment bushings for standard shift transmissions or some kind of a pilot bushing that may have been in there before you got the motor. So you're going to want to check this and you're going to want to check your dowel pins. Okay. So one of the next things we want to check is the flywheel. We want to make sure that the flywheel lines up with the holes in the torque converter. If these are not lined up properly, they need to be drilled and the easiest way to do that is you can take the flywheel, just lay it on your torque converter, line everything up and drill your new holes. Again, the adapter that goes in the back of the crankshaft 
needs to fit the torque converter nice and tight. All these few steps we just did need to be done before the transmission is installed. If you're like most of us, we bolt the transmission in, put the cross member in, the drive shaft, and the torque converter is usually the last thing we do up. So let's make sure we're torque converter and our flywheel line up, make sure that our pilot fits properly, and make sure that this fits on our adapter like it's supposed to. Then we're ready to install the transmission. Like I say, we just put it up there. The transmission needs to be pushed on, not drawled on with bolts, but just needs to be pushed on, insert the bolts and tighten it down. While you're doing this, you're going to want to take and move the torque converter back and forth a little bit to make sure it stays nice and free. When you're putting this in, you do not want the torque converter to be tight against the flywheel. Otherwise, there's a clearance issue there. You need to have a quarter of an inch distance between the flywheel and the torque converter. If you have more than a quarter of an inch distance, then you're going to need to make some spacers to take some of that up. The torque converter, when you put the bolts in, when you put the torque converter bolts in, they must pull the flywheel forward. You need to look up there between the flywheel and the torque converter and make sure that your pilot is going into the back of the crankshaft. If you bolt this up, and you notice that the flywheel starts to flex any, stop, pull it all out, take the torque converter, set it up on the back of the motor and the, with the flywheel and everything installed, you should be able to push that all the way up against the flywheel. If you can't, we need to figure out why it's not going into the back of the crankshaft. When you're to try and decide, when you're trying to decide on which transmission to use, on our website, you will find this little, this little fact sheet of transmissions and the overall length they are and where the transmission mount is to go. This will be a big help in determining which transmission you're going to use. Just because it's a GM transmission, the mounts are not in the same spot on all of them. Just because it's a Ford, the same thing applies. So take a look at this little fact sheet on our website and it will help you determine what kind of transmission to use. Okay, so we were talking about the 700R4 transmission. One thing we have to do, and we must remember this on all overdrive transmissions, is lockup has to work. If lockup does not work, the transmission will overheat and you will destroy it. Now you can run around town in, in overdrive because you're not putting the transmission in any risk but when you get out on the highway because of the stall speed of the torque converter the transmission needs to be locked up it'll generate too much heat so when you take the pan off you will see this here which is a, what they call a valve body and these valve bodies may have as many as four switches on them but right at the moment we're only concerned about putting a single terminal switch in this spot right here and you'll see that part number on our website it's a normally open switch and will close when fourth gear oil hits it so we'll take all these switches out if we got these two switches here and one here we'll take those out plug them with eighth inch pipe plugs take this switch out and put in our single terminal normal open switch then we will have to we will have to rewire our solenoid. If you do take this solenoid out and you only have one wire on it, that means it's an internally grounded solenoid. That will not work for this procedure. You will need to have a two wire solenoid. That number you will also find on our website. So what we need to do is these two wires are the ones we're concerned about is the red and the black wire. 
we'll follow these down to this black wire here. This black wire, we will cut this off, remove the blue wire. This black wire will get hooked onto this fourth gear switch. Next thing we want to do is follow this red wire. Now the red wire may split up into two wires like this. What we'll need to do is join those two wires together. This connector that hooked to your original case plug will be eliminated. We will cut the wire off here. Again, we need to use the red wire. We will take and put a spade terminal on it so we can hook it to our new case connector. Whoops. Hook it to our new case connector. We'll just take a screwdriver and a hammer, nothing fancy, knock the old plug out, put a little grease on this old ring, and it will snap right in where the old one was. Then you just hook the red wire onto this terminal. So let's go through that again. We've pulled all of our switches out. We've plugged these three, if there were switches there. We put our normally open fourth gear switch here. We've modified our solenoid. We've put our new case connector in and hooked the red wire up to it. That should be all we need to do electrically inside the transmission. While you got the pan off, it's a good idea to put a new filter on it and fill it up with new oil. I recommend using good quality ATF. Stay away from the 39 cent a quart oil. Use what the manufacturer tells you to use and you won't have any problems. We can put the pan on it, torque it down to 18 foot pounds. We're ready to let the vehicle down on the ground and work on the top side. On the converter bolts, you're going to want to make sure that the converter you're using, you put the proper bolts in. Some threads are American and some are metric. So make sure you get the right bolt to put in there to begin with. Second thing is, be very careful of the length of the bolt. If the bolt is too long, it'll go all the way through here and it'll dimple. You get a bolt that's too long when you screw it in there so you'll go all the way down contact this surface here. You'll get a dimple in here and that's where your your converter clutch rides. You'll take the lining right off of it the first time it applies. So be very careful on the length of those converter bolts. Okay let's move on to wiring the transmission on the outside. Now in order for lockup to work, we need to wire power down to the single terminal switch. Again, we'll go through it real briefly, but this here will also be on our website, so you can go back and look at it at a later date. Let's take a look at the parts themselves. Okay, now let's take a look at these relays. You know, it's a black box, but there's really no mystery to it. It's got five terminals on it. And the nice thing about relays is, is if you look at the top of this relay right here, it's got the diagram on there. It shows you how to wire it. And if you look at the bottom of it, you're not going to be able to see it very well. But each one of these terminals is numbered. Whether it's this relay, this relay, or the one in your Cadillac, it's a standard. They're all wired the same. That's pretty simple stuff. So what you're going to want to do is when you get your relay, it's going to come with a connector on it and, and five wires. If you look at the diagram that I got. Okay, so it's pretty simple. So what we're going to do is on terminal 87 of this relay, we're going to take that wire out because we're not going to use that wire at all. That wire's gone, history. Terminal number 86, we're going to take and we're going to run that to a good ground. 
good ground on the chassis or if you're like most people and you wire your car you should have a ground pin on there so you want to run that to a good solid ground terminal 30 you're going to want to run that to an ignition on in other words when the key is turned on you're going to want power to the number 30 terminal you're also going to want to put a 10 amp fuse in there if you don't put a fuse in there and the solenoid shorts out or one of your wires go bad it's dangerous you could end up setting your car on fire we don't want that to happen make sure you put a fuse in there terminal 87A you're going to want to run that wire to this connector if you remember we put that in the transmission and the red wires on the other end so you're going to make sure that that 87A wire goes to the top side of this connector I saved this one to the last because it's probably going to be the hardest for people to understand. But the 85 terminal, you're going to want to run down to your brake light switch. Now you're going to want to tie that into the same side that your brake lights are on. Not into the power side of your brake light switch, but into the activation side. In other words, when you push the brake pedal, when your brake lights light up, that's the side you want to run that to. So, so what's going to happen is you're going to turn the key on, you're going to go down to your transmission with a test light, you're going to check this terminal, see if you got 12 volts there. You should have 12 volts there. If you don't, then you wired something wrong, plain and simple. If you got 12 volts there, you want to get cousin Eddie in the car and have him push on the brake pedal. When he pushes the brake pedal, you will lose power at the transmission. This is so that when you come up to a stop and you push on the brakes, the torque converter clutch will disengage so you're not feeling like you're, you're trailer hitching or pulsating when you're coming up to a stop. Remember, Cousin Eddie on the brake pedal, no voltage to this terminal. Okay, so one of the next things we need to do with our transmission, our overdrive transmission, is all four-speed automatic transmissions are controlled with a, either through a cable, manual linkage, off of the carburetor or the throttle body. They've all got to have some kind of hookup in order to control the line pressure within the transmission. If you don't control the line pressure, you won't have a transmission everything Cousin Eddie did is down the tubes. So on a 700, you're going you're gonna to wanna, wanna hook the detent cable. It just slides over here and you push it down in the transmission. It's held down with a 10 millimeter bolt. Pretty elementary. Not much to going on there. Okay, so when we get up to the carburetor or the throttle body, we need to have a way to hook this cable up. And not only do you just hook it up, but it needs to meet some criteria. It has to pull in relationships so the transmission pressure can come up at the proper These throttle. drawings you will find on our website, so you don't have to hit pause. Just go to our website and you can find them. But on a 700 bracket, um, will need to be made. You can buy them. I think Edelbrock makes them and a couple other places make them. But I just thought this was kind of neat. I'm a little bit on the frugal side, so I like to make my stuff. It seems to work out better. So I've included some dimensions here for you to cut out for the cable to slip into. And then this next card here, which this is also on our website, this gives you an idea of what you're looking at as far as the cable hooking up, what kind of throw you need, the angles that you're going to get. Again, this is explained a lot better on the website. Go to our website, check it so out. On the carburetor then, or throttle body, you still need something to hook the cable itself to. After you've made the bracket and you think you've got it all right, then you need something to hook the cable to. There's a company called Sonex Performance. They make these cables for the Edelbrock carburetor and the Holly carburetor. Very simple installation. 
They just bolt right As on. you can see, it gives you some idea of where the cable needs to go in relation to everything. This takes a big bite out of doing it all yourself. Buy these brackets, you'll save yourself a ton of money. After you get the cable all hooked up on it, I think, well, let's see, we've got the transmission installed. We've got the wiring done. We've got the TV cable hooked up. Now all we need to do is see how fast we're going. So I've included this. Again, you can go to our website, and it'll be on our website. It's pretty simple little, little math equation here for figuring out what your speedometer gear teeth should be. It's a little simple multiplication, a little division there. No problem whatsoever. Okay, we've got all that done now. First thing you want to do now is you want to drop it on the ground and take it out and drive it. So there's one more thing we need to do. That TV cable is very important. Doesn't matter whether it's a Chrysler, Ford, or General Motors transmission. That cable must be set properly. Check a repair manual, you get online, because there is a certain adjustment you want to do to that while it's at rest. Normally is what you're looking for so with the vehicle idling in park or neutral, you want to see a line pressure reading of approximately 70 to 75 PSI. If you see a 200 PSI on there, you just broke your 100 pound gauge. But at 200 PSI, that transmission will not shift because it's in limp mode and you need to readjust it. The higher you make that pressure, the higher the shifts will be, it will make the shifts a little firmer. But we need to get down into the proper range to start with. Right around 70, 75 PSI, line pressure on a 700. Boy, that was a lot of work, I'll tell you. Putting them overdrive transmissions in is really something. You know, it's no big mystery. It's not a black box. It's not rocket science. You can put it in. Just take your time. You're going to really like it when you're done. The nice thing is if you're building the hot rod and you don't have your transmission yet, now's the time to put an overdrive transmission in. Remember, it's going to pay you back in the gas. You're going to have less noise. You're going to be a lot more happier running down the road at 70 mile an hour, turning 2,000 RPM. Check back on our website. We will be discussing putting in an electronic transmission. And it's very simple to do. No laptop required. Anybody can program them. You can set your shift points, your lockup, whatever you want to do, you can set on that. One of the really cool things is we're going to talk about when we're talking about the electronic transmissions is not only four speeds, but we can put six speeds, eight speeds in, there's no limit to what you can put into that. So until next time, happy trails.